Yo, what's good everybody? Keith from Almost In Full Color, and today we're doing a Grand Blue Fantasy Relink video on the PlayStation 5. But, before we begin, I believe that this game makes the assumption that you've had some exposure to Grand Blue media. If you have no idea what Grand Blue is, I'd highly encourage you to watch Grand Blue, the animation anime. It's out there on Crunchyroll. I would say you only need to watch the first season. There are two seasons, so if you really enjoy it, you should watch both. But I would say you only really need to watch the first just to kind of know who the players are, to know some story beats of the overarching story, the culture, the races that exist, the nations, things of that nature. Because when the game starts, you're introduced to Grand and the crew, and you're not really introduced to them. It's like, hey, yo, here are the boys, so, you know, let's go rock out on this adventure. We don't have time to recruit people. We're just getting straight into it. So now we got that disclaimer out the way. Let's just start the visuals. The game looks really good, and they do a really great job with transitions. This game really, really made me happy with going from that cutscene to a fight, going from that cutscene to controlling the character. I think they did a fantastic job, and vice versa. Going from a fight to a cutscene, excellent job. I am extremely happy with what we got by way of the visuals department. That 60 frames, the game plays well. It's snappy, it's responsive, and it's absolutely amazing. The sound and the BGM are great, but the one thing in the sound department that really got me was that the English voice actors did a really good job. We've been getting really, really better with the English voice actors in this genre. It's always been cringe. It's always been like, ah, I'm just going to put on Japanese with the uh, English subs. And now we're getting better. It sounds amazing. They did an excellent job. They really captured the essence that is the characters of Grand Blue and the bonds between them. I mean, it really felt like, hey, like these people really, really get down with each other, like in real life. And that's always a good thing when it's able to jump off of screen and, and make you feel that way. So kudos to the voice acting team. Now, the story of this game, it kind of serves as an adventure of Grand and the crew. So when you come into it, you're on an adventure. Things are happening. Things are moving. Pieces are all over the place as an adventure is. It's a very solid story. It's not a story that's going to blow your socks off or anything like that. No, nah, but it's good fun and it's a solid story. And that's pretty much all I'm looking for in any game, really. Just give me a good story. It doesn't have to be the best, but just make sure that, you know, you dot your I's and you cross your T's and, and we're good. So leave very minimal plot holes. This game does all of that and i was very happy with the story like i said it's really good fun and the moments are big there are big big moments in there which again if you watch the anime i think those big moments will translate over to you if you didn't watch it and you're just gonna jump right into it that is possible the game does offer something called fate episodes which kind of just gives like a little bit of a dive into the characters your main core characters as i'll call them i'll explain why i call them core characters in a moment but it gives you a dive into them, but I believe that the anime will help you really understand like how big some of these moments are. So once again, just want to say, story is solid, all right? But where this game to me really shines is this gameplay. I mean, that that's the thing, right? That's the thing that's going to keep us going. So this game is akin to the Tales or the E-Series where it's free roam based so you can move around, jump around, and you're doing combos. You utilize square, triangle, and if you hold R1, you're going to bring up your skill wheel and you can utilize those skills as well. Some of those skills combo in, some of them don't combo in so nicely, so it's going to be up to you to kind of figure out, hey, how do I combo with this and how do I combo with that? Now, a negative thing is you cannot change characters in the battle so whoever you have set as the party leader is a character that you will control although you can't switch them in battle after the battle you can't actually switch your party leader you have to go into the menu to do that it's it's really quick it sounds like you know it's a lot but to go into that menu change that character it's really quick and you can experiment with characters and it's actually really fun I really, really enjoy just switching out, just seeing who I liked, who I didn't like. Not every character plays the same. For instance, Rackham has a thing called the heat gauge, and you want to tap triangle if you want to do a single fire of his gun, and you want to hold it if you want to use it as a three burst. And then he has like this hand cannon that you use triangle with. So his play style is way different from Grand, where you want to, you know, just tap square to do, you know, a one, two, three combo. You then can mix in triangle to add in his elemental affinity. And if you look at each character in that menu, you'll see their elemental affinity, their natural one. When you unlock skills, you may unlock a skill that uses another element, 
but their natural affinity will be the one that you see in that menu up there. So every character plays a tad bit different, some similar, but each one pretty much has their own thing, their own flavor. Now I told you you had your core characters when you come in. So these are the characters that you're going to see in the cutscenes. These are the characters that you're introduced at the beginning of the game. That's your core set. Once you complete chapter 5, you'll get an item known as a crewmate calling card or something to that effect. And when you get that, you're going to be able to redeem that card to recruit another character. So it's not like other games where you go and you complete a special set of conditions to recruit a character or you just ask a character to join your party. Nope, you get this item, you go to this vendor, the vendor will have all these characters that you can recruit and it's a ton of them. It's an absolute lot. It is daunting. Now when you look at the character that you're going to recruit, it'll actually tell you what their elemental affinity is and it'll show you a little bit of their gameplay so you can see what type of weapon that they use and if they seem slow or fast or you know what do they seem like. So it's very nice that that's there so you can kind of look at each character and pick as you want to now these characters won't have any impact on the story however in battle their existence is acknowledged so it's not like they're just like aberrations or something like that like weird characters that jump in and are never acknowledged so in battle characters will talk and your core characters will talk to them or however you put it but they do have distinct dialogue just for those characters so that was very nice to see that even though that they don't show up in cutscenes or they have a big part in the actual main story that they do have some format of acknowledgement throughout the game now as you play with these characters and they level up you're going to get something called mastery points now you can also get these mastery points through opening treasure chests there are little nodes on the floors that you can find little blue glowy sphere things so you can find these mastery points through other ways there are also side quests that will offer up mastery points as a reward so you can take these mastery points you can go in your skill tree and then you can start using those points and spending them however just know that these mastery points are shared throughout all characters and like i told you you had your core set and then you have even more that you can recruit it's gonna feel like you're not getting enough mastery points and if you feel that way i do understand some people like to level people all the same I would tell you just to experiment, see what characters you really like, and just focus on them. There's no point in the story where you're really going to have to be like, oh, I have to use this character and I never invested into them. No, nothing like that. So I would say just use who you like and invest into that character. However, if you really want to invest in all your characters simultaneously, totally fine and I understand that. Now there's an NPC who works for the guild and essentially they will give you quests, but these quests, if you look at them carefully, will actually tell you kind of what they're geared towards. So one of them says that this is for mastery points. Another one says this is for monster materials if you're looking for that. Other ones say that this is just a level up if you feel like you're behind in levels. So it's really great that they actually offer that in a way that you don't have to really go out into dungeons or dungeon crawl or go back and just farm that way. Like they have something built in. So you just go talk to this person and they'll say, hey, what do you want to do? You want to do a survival mode? Okay, cool. This is going to give you some mastery points. Go ahead and do it. If you score this high in here, you'll get these rewards and so on and so forth. So it just feels much better than just going and farming out. And you can use this to farm if you really want to. It just feels much better versus, you know, going out and farming the other way. I really, really enjoy this aspect of the game. Now, one thing I will say about combat and battle that really, really bothered me a little bit was how busy things can get, especially in boss battles. Bosses are doing some of the flashiest moves and they look amazing. But not only that, once you start unlocking moves for your teammates and you start doing these flashy moves, those are taking up a lot of screen and just are bright and crazy. Great thing, I didn't notice any drop frames or just degradation whatsoever. Game ran beautifully. Bad thing, when all these things are happening, it's just very hard sometimes to notice what the boss is doing, especially when they have white mechanics or insta-kill moves where you're trying to just, you know, read the animation, but, you know, you have characters just doing these big things that's going on and you're trying to keep up and you just can't get there. Now, one thing I will say is that the game is a tad bit forgiving, but not forgiving when it comes to hitting zero HP. When you hit zero HP, you get knocked out. Now, you can tap any button if you're the person knocked out, and as you tap it, you'll build up a bar and you can come back into the fight. If one of your teammates is knocked out, you can run over to them, 
old circle and you'll basically revive them but really you're helping that bar build faster as they're tapping the button to get up every time a character gets knocked out there's a red bar that'll be in your middle of your screen and it'll kind of show how forgiving this is going to be until it ultimately depletes so it looked like i believe you had like five knockouts maybe between your whole team and therein lies the issue with insta kill moves i'm not saying the ai is terrible but sometimes they do real boneheaded stuff so just be on the lookout for that now one thing that this game offers that is actually really dope and you don't see it that often is co-op and i was very happy to see this you just don't really see it too often so to have co-op in a game like this was fantastic to see where you can go in and you can do some of these survivals on a team or you could do some of the hunts on the team it just i was like wow this this is dope so now this game i beat it in around 23 hours i played it on normal so i didn't play it on a hard difficulty just because i was like you know let me just get through this first one and then i'm gonna put it on ultimate mode to try to get this platinum trophy and i think that just goes to show how much i like the game i'm actually going to go for this platinum trophy for this it just requires you to beat on the hardest difficulty which is ultimate you need to clear it on any difficulty to unlock that so going to clear it there and then i'm gonna double back and you can actually do a chapter select after you beat the game so that's awesome now, like i said 23 hours to beat i know a lot of people were like oh that kind of sucks for a jrpg you know now you know normally those clock in between you know the 40 to 80 hour range it depends on the game and you know it could be even more than that to be honest but i felt like 23 was a great point and this game is chock full of side quests and there's in-game content as well like i spoke to the co-op so there are very very difficult missions that you could take on and you can do those co-op with other people and i thought that was excellent and i think it was a really good kind of midpoint a 23 hour campaign and then on top of that here's some extra bosses to fight here are some very super bosses to fight so i, I personally think this is a very good time frame to have a main campaign and then you tack on another 30 hours of in-game content. And I mean, if you really, really like this game and enjoy this game, I think you can really go another 60, especially if you want to 100%, if you want to get every person's mastery full max, if you want to get every weapon full max, if you want to do all these other little things, yeah, I definitely think that you would have a great time and you could throw in 80 hours into this game. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this one. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is an amazing game. I highly encourage you to check it out. Watch anime first if you are brand new to this, but this is a great beginner RPG. There is very little crafting, and the crafting that does exist is very simple. The leveling system is pretty straightforward. Skill tree system is straightforward. You have tons of characters to choose from, all with different play styles. This game is absolutely amazing. My only two gripes with it were the lack of minimap and how busy the screen can get. However, listen, when you're doing some of these flashy moves to regular ads, it's amazing. So it's a gift and a curse. When you're fighting regular ads, it's amazing. But when you're fighting a boss and a lot's going on and you're just trying to watch out for certain moves that will take you out, then it can get a little rough. But that's going to do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for staying tuned in. This is a crazy season right now i know that we got a lot of videos coming out so make sure you hit the notification and subscription button and as usual y'all peace peace be blessed